some snowboarders to the Wired Sport Lodge. Make yourselves comfortable because we are about to go deep into gear sizing. The perfect fit all starts with the feet, so let's break it down. Your snowboard boot size is never the same as your US shoe size. Most sizing mistakes start right here. It's very common for riders to realize late in the game, years later even, that they've been using boots that are one, two, and even three sizes too large. So here it is again. Your snowboard boot size is never the same as your US shoe size. In this video, I'm gonna do my very best to saturate your brain with this critical fact. But first, a moment to introduce this series and our new channel. In the great sport of snowboarding, your gear choices are directly related to your fun, your rate of improvement, and your ability to reach your performance potential. But I'm gonna throw it out there and say that there is more misinformation about the gear that we rely on than there is in any other sport. There, it's been said. With this series, I intend to isolate each element of this misinformation, dismantle it, and hopefully provide you with some facts that will lead you to better gear fit, greatly improve riding performance, and joy. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, share, comment, and essentially click every button on the YouTube player. The goal being to shock the Google slash YouTube algorithm into doing our bid. Boots are the most important piece of snowboard gear. You've likely heard this at some point in your snowboard gear quest, but is it true? No, unless you get it wrong, and then yes. That is to say, properly fit, your snowboard, your boots, and your bindings are of equal importance to one another, and all three need to function as one unit. Boots, however, play a unique role in the buying process and do deserve special consideration, and most importantly, first consideration. A very common scenario is that an unsuspecting and improperly advised rider will purchase boots in their shoe size or worse, above their shoe size. Based on that faulty decision, they'll then buy bindings which are too large to fit the incorrectly sized boots, and lastly, they select a board width based on the oversized boots and bindings. This happens all the time, and it is very expensive to fix. Boots first, boots right. This has to be the mantra. Alrighty, let's add some meat to those bones. Snowboard Boot Sizer is a site that we at Wired Sport developed a number of years ago with the sole purpose of helping riders to visualize today's main point. Your snowboard boot size is never the same as your US shoe size. I'll post a link in the description, but let's run through an example together. Using the top slider, we need to enter our barefoot measurement in either centimeters or inches. Brief instructions on how to get this measurement can be viewed by clicking the info icon right here. Getting accurate foot measurements is essential to getting correctly sized snowboard gear, board, boots, and bindings. So I'll do a detailed how to measure installment as my next video in this series. I want to impress on you that you are capable of getting far more accurate measurements of your feet at home with a measurement tool that you already own than you will get at dedicated snowboard shops. Using my own foot measurement, I'm going to nudge the slider up to 29.5 centimeters, which will also register as 11.61 inches. That's it. Now. Notice that we have three tabs to choose from. By default, we're looking at the Snowboard Boot Size tab. You can now view my measurement that has produced a US Snowboard Boot Size of 11.5. This number is a conversion that we have taken from the common conversion chart used by snowboard manufacturers. Keep in mind that this number is a conversion only and is not a measurement of any part of the human foot. That'll become important later. Now let's click on the second tab labeled Brannock Shoe Size. Brannock refers to the metal shoe size device that is used at every shoe store that you've ever visited. Without having made any change to our actual foot measurement, we notice that we now have a different size. This tab shows the exact shoe size that you will see on a Brannock device when you put in a foot of the length that we entered here. For myself, this is size 13, which is indeed my shoe size. Let's now move on to the Internet Shoe Size tab. Again, 
without making any changes to our actual foot measurement, we'll get an even larger resulting shoe size. This tab displays the results that you'll find in sizing charts on many large shoe retailer websites. So to review, for a single foot measurement value, we're getting three different resulting sizes, with snowboard boot size being significantly smaller than the two shoe size results. Why is this? The simple answer is that snowboard boots are designed and constructed to function entirely differently than other footwear. We control our boards by the leverage and pressure that is transmitted through our boots. A sloppy fit equals poor transmission. This is a great time to mention Mondo Point. Unlike the other sizes that will be printed on your snowboard boot tongue and other packaging, Mondo Point is not a conversion. It is very simply your foot measurement in millimeters. For that reason, we encourage all riders to use only their Mondo Point size for buying snowboard boots. Mondo Point is always accurate. Installment three of this series will be entirely about Mondo Point, so there'll be much more coming on this soon. Today, our focus will stay on the fallacy of shoe size. Now let's look at some real world examples to demonstrate the difference between boot size and shoe size. You can follow this same process at home. First, we pull the insert or the footbed from a pair of sneakers or shoes that were purchased at our Brannock shoe size. Now, we'll stand on that insert barefoot and with the heel all the way back in the heel detent of the insert. You'll notice that the insert is larger than the foot. You'll see free space to allow that wiggling of the toes that mom always looked for. Oh, the freedom. So now let's do the same thing with snowboard boots purchased at our Mondo Point size. Pull out those inserts, stand on them barefoot, always barefoot, and what? What happened to my freedom? This is where we get into the fundamental difference between snowboard boots and other footwear. Snowboard boots are designed so that your foot will firmly press into the compliant materials of the boot liner, everywhere. This means that your foot will be and should be significantly larger than the boots insert. That full foot surround, that firm pressure is the qualifying feature of a good fit. We call it the everywhere fit. Furthermore, this is the way that snowboard boots are designed to fit. This allows for the most immediate response and transfer of rider motion to board reaction. A boot size that's shoe size will always rob you of this immediacy. Counterintuitively, this correct fit will also be the most comfortable fit. The best designed, most expensive snowboard boot in the world will not work well at your US shoe size. In fact, you will miss the majority of what you're paying for. A much less expensive and basic boot in your correct size will offer far better performance. Furthermore, once a rider is downsized to his correct snowboard boot size, they will very often no longer require as stiff a boot or rely as heavily on over tightening. In many instances, those solutions are found to have been a mostly futile attempt to correct for unwanted motion inside a poorly fit boot. Now enter the myth of the performance fit versus the comfort fit so commonly repeated and so damaging. This is often used for the reluctant rider as a sales saver. Maybe you'd prefer more of a comfort fit. There's no such thing as a performance fit or a comfort fit. There's only correct fit and too loose. The correct fit works well for all riders from first day on the hill to touring professionals. This is a great time to add in a little discussed fact. Heat fit aka heat molding, aka thermoforming, will not work on a boot that is sized at shoe size. The heat fit process relies entirely on your foot forcing out the heated liner material to displace it and form a negative of your exact foot shape inside the boot's liner. This is a wonderful process which should be considered mandatory for all boots. Without a boot sized at shoe size, however, there's insufficient pressure to displace the heated EVA inside the liner, 
and the heat fit has no positive effect and can in many instances make things worse. I'll do another installment on the do's and don'ts of heat fit, but consider this a little primer. I want to take a minute now to talk about how a snowboard boot should feel. It's important to note the significant forward lean that is shaped and sewn into all snowboard boots. A snowboard boot is shaped like an upside down seven. So when you drop your foot into the boot, your heel will be resting up to an inch away from the back of the boot and your toes may be jammed into the front of the boot. This is normal. Until the boot is tightly laced, you will not know if it's a correct fit. To get an accurate feel for the boot, kick your heel back against the ground several times. This will drive your heel back into the boot's heel pocket. Now, lace the boot tightly as though you are going to ride. Loosely laced boots will not work. You should now have firm pressure into the compliant materials of the boot's liner. As this is the crux of sizing, let's talk about firm pressure. This is the everywhere fit that I mentioned earlier, and it almost always feels unusual, surprising, or even incorrect to a new rider. When you flex your knee forward hard, this pressure should lighten somewhat as your toes pull back, but you will always be in contact with the liner. At no time should you feel numbness or loose circulation. You should never feel pain in a correctly fit boot. When you've achieved this combination of firm pressure and no circulation loss, you've found the correct size. As for that unusual feeling, that is the fit that is specific to snowboard boots. You'll come to love that, not only for the comfort and support, but also for the performance boost that you'll see in your riding. It's worth noting at this point that all snowboard boots will break in over the first few weeks of riding. Your new boots will gain roughly one centimeter or one full boot size during that break-in period. A correctly sized boot will remain snug through and after the break-in period. But a boot sized at your shoe size will go from bad to worse. And yes, you will come to miss that crispy new boot feel. Taking a step back now, let's talk about the misinformation itself that so often leads to poor sizing choices. We're asked about this every day still, almost 30 years later. But my buddy told me to buy my shoe size. But the shop guy said to go to a bigger size than my shoe size. But this brand website said, here's a fundamental truth. It is much easier to sell the incorrect boot size that is to say, a boot that is too large, one that fits like a familiar shoe, than it is to sell the correct size. There's education involved, it takes time, and as I mentioned, it'll feel unusual at first to a new rider. For those reasons, it's very common for the easy answer, the easy sale, to win out. The internet has not helped with that situation. While there's plenty of excellent fit information online, there are also notable and prominent instances where poor information is published. Some of this is a genuine disconnect between the brands that are working hard to create great products and their web teams, often non-snowboarders, who are putting out some very damaging content. We've covered a lot of the basics now, but we still need to address some common questions that often arise when correct sizing is proposed. Doesn't width matter? It absolutely does. The discussion has been entirely about foot length, but no sizing method will be accurate unless width is also measured and accounted for. This will not change the correct size for your foot. It'll only determine the width that you will need when purchasing at that size. Width is equally important to length in boot sizing, but almost no snowboard boots contain any information about a boot's width. In fact, currently only two boot manufacturers provide any width information at all, and even then it's only for their wide models. I'm going to implore you not to buy boots until you've measured barefoot width and until you've determined if a wide boot is required. I'm going to go into that process in much more detail in our upcoming How to Measure and Mondo Point installments, so hold tight. 
Stone internal harnesses and heel hold mechanisms offer equal benefits to Mondo point sizing? The short answer is absolutely not. These designs can offer real benefits to some riders, but only in a properly sized boot. They're not sufficient and will not work in an oversized boot. That is to say, they work very well for some feet, but can cause significant discomfort for others. Aren't black toenails and bruised toes from boots that have been sized this way? No. Motion within the boot is the cause of almost all toe bruising in snowboarding. A boot that is too large allows the foot to repeatedly slide back and forth inside the boot. While the motion may seem small, over the course of a day, this constant pounding will cause damage. Guys, you have made it. This has been Randy, and I want to thank you for your time today. I've had the incredible good fortune to have been operating Wired Sport and WiredSport.com with my wife Chantel for almost 30 years now. We get to work every day with a team of the most stoked and most dedicated snowboarders in the world. We fit, design, manufacture, and sell snowboard gear to riders of every age and every rider ability. Our specialty is providing reasonably priced, super high quality, complete snowboard packages with an unbeatable warranty. We're here to help riders find their perfect gear, so please don't hesitate to reach out with any sizing questions or gear questions, whether we carry the gear that interests you or not. I hope that you'll join me soon for installment number two. Please enjoy the rest of this descent without my blabbering.